<laughs> For the next two days, co-founders Angelica Langan and her husband Peter are off on the season's final bear release, leaving their shelter and horse ranch in the hands of their daughter Tanya. Hello, Tanya speaking. Good job. And their volunteer team. It's happened numerous times now that when my parents leave, we're all kind of stretched to the max. Here, 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 here. Here. The skeleton crew have their hands full, caring for the growing menagerie of hungry mouths. We have new animals that haven't been here very long that need a lot of extra care. Every animal has its own special diet. Oh, there we go. Good job and unique table manners. Dude, what's wrong with you? Rowena is our raven that we raised this year. She likes to make life difficult. She likes to land on my horses. She's a bit of a loud mouth. Can you stop yelling? Dude. The problem is, Rowena crows when she's hungry. Hello, hello, hello. And even when she's not. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the raven, no. Oh. Kind of annoying, obviously. But the most challenging animal to feed is an underweight cub named Taku whose pickiness has become a real concern. Let's see if he feels up to taking this. This morning, I tried to feed the little cub again. And he didn't want to take anything. It's been too long that he's been without food. Come on, man. Teku was hit by a car that killed his mother and left him with an injured mouth. Oh, wow. Requiring five baby teeth be removed. Mm. Taku started to rally, but then slid back and lost his appetite. And he was kind of like, oh, food, and then he turned away. So it's like he's looking for food, so it looked like he was hungry. This little guy was already pretty small for his age. He's just not recovering the way we'd like him to, and there's a lot of signs there that he needs help. So he's going to go in for some fluids with a vet that was, of course, overbooked. Taku is slated for an IV later in the day. The plan is to bring him in and get him on IV with dextrose and stuff, so hopefully that will give a little bit of a push. If he doesn't start eating soon, Taku may never bounce back. Up in the main cub enclosure, Taku's brother Yukon is having his own struggles. Come on. Just getting to his dinner. Most of the time, as long as we spread the food out enough, then every bear has a chance to get his uh, portion. But Yukon is being barred from getting his fair share. He's feisty and he stands up for himself, but he doesn't really claim his spot on the food plateau. We have to keep a close eye on him that he gets his food intake. Come on. Go down. Go. Guy. I'm a stick. I'm trying to push him onto the plateau so that he can claim his bowl. 
you to go. Go eat, little one. For now, Yukon is getting his fill. So Kim can take his brother Taku in for his IV at the vet. Then, more trouble arises. Hey. Hey, uh, I gotta bring Dylan in. Uh, count the big gas for the fridge up there. Okay. I guess he just called that one of the falls has a big gash up front, so he's bringing them in. Deal with that too. This is Ghost. This is Angelica's personal horse. And this is her foal. She's not even a month old yet. When Jesse called and said Count has a wound, I'm like, oh, okay, we know we do a lot ourselves. We can probably fix it, clean it, and bandage it. Oh. Yeah, that's why I called it. And when I came around the corner and saw the wound, good catch, Jesse. I was like, oh gosh, I can fix this. This goes beyond my expertise. Baby, what did you do? So I called Tanya right away. She had to do errands in town. It's Murphy's Law. When my parents leave, everything gets crazy. I got caught in the fence somehow. Volunteer Jesse Towns found Angelica's full count with a gash on his shoulder. <laughs> with her parents away, it's Tanya's job to deal with the injured foal. Little dude, I'll leave a scar. I'm assuming because of the spot that it's on, there's too much movement. I don't think they can stitch it because the stitches would just break. Either way, it's going to leave a, a pretty good mark on him. What happened last night, Ghosty? Ghost will travel to the vet with her injured foal, Count, to keep him calm. While Taku rides inside. They're about to rush off. Um, is he okay? When Tanya spots another animal down. He was totally faking it. I got right up to him and then he... <laughs> <laughs> she threw her head up and yelled at me. She was fine. I guess she was sunbathing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're busted. Anything to get attention. At the Smithers Animal Clinic, Taku is first in for his vet visit. Yeah, he definitely looks more dead than last time. Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't have a lot of energy, no, right? He doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Callie Lancaster will try to give Taku an intravenous booster. I'm hoping that if he gets more fluids in it, he feels a yeah. bit better. Usually, when we're working with small animals like this, we try to do the IV fluids through a vein. Save your energy, bud. We're not seen as being very good here. Probably doesn't have a lot of fluids in him, too. Yeah. It makes it harder. Part of it. Yeah. There's no such side. In this case, he's pretty dehydrated, and it makes it really hard for them to find that vein. Ah! Hold on, baby. Nope, we lost it again. So 
rather than continue to poke around and, and make things even more uncomfortable, we opted to sedate him a little bit more than we had planned and actually put the IV fluid right through the jugular vein. While Taku gets his IV, we're going to go do a full. Callie and Tanya see to Count's shoulder injury. Oh, yeah, that's a good one, isn't it? Like, what we should do is just give a little bit of sedation and just, yeah, so that's going to be, aren't. no, there's going to be way too much tension. So, what we'll do. Unfortunately, due to the wound's location, we can't put stitches in because the muscle works there too strong and it would just simply rip out quite quickly. We'll just wash it out really good here and just get the yep. dead tissue off. Eh? It'll heal, it'll heal well, right? Like, it's just got a lot of swelling on it too, just because of the muscles, but you finally don't even hurt you the scar on these guys, so, okay. <laughs> It's always good to have a vet look at it and say, okay, this isn't as bad as it looks and it, it's gonna be okay. While Taku stays behind on his IV drip, Kim and Tanya take Count back to the shelter. A little bit more. Close, yeah. There's a large gaping wound there now that we need to maintain. This time of year, of course, we're dealing with bugs and, and all these types of things, so it's, it's definitely a bit of a challenge to make sure that he's, you know, got the best chance at healing. But before they can relax... Good morning. Conservation officers call about another orphaned animal. Okay, sounds good. And Tanya heads off to pick up the rare new guest. getting a new animal. What, what is, is it? it? No! Tanya Landry is arriving back at the shelter with a surprise new guest. We're getting a new animal. What, what is, is it? it? Wolf puppy. No! <laughs> oh my no. god, you're kidding! I was pretty excited. I had never seen a wolf ever. Another unique guest. We don't have too much information about her yet, other than that she's roughly two months old and weighs about five pounds, and she's black. Unfortunately, wolf rehab in itself is not a possibility. Although we're allowed to take them in, we're allowed to raise them, they're not an animal that is allowed to be released back into the wild like we do with the bears. So regardless of where she goes, it's going to be in human care somewhere. So the more comfortable she is with people, the better it'll be. While their shy new guest gets settled in, <laughs> Rowena, the shelter's extrovert, makes her rounds. You know, I'm not gonna lie. Originally, I wasn't a big fan. It was, uh, it was quite funny. Yeah, I know, bud. There you go. You got your loving. Ravens are incredibly intelligent. Well? They're mischievous, actually. They get into a lot of trouble. They always end up pulling, you know, keys out of the four-wheeler. The pens out from the whiteboard. But the thing is, too, is that they will remember uh, individuals. So this is the reason why I can pet her, because I've been nothing but kind to her. Ah, you. Let go. Show everybody your teeth. You gonna let go? Okay, are you done? Can I have it back now? Thank you. That was actually quite painful. In town, Taku has had his IV meant to boost his energy and appetite. 
thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can get some food in you now. <laughs> okay. Feels heavier. <laughs> After getting back to the shelter, he's like, I know this place. Kim lays out a spread of Bear Cub's choice fruits. How do you feel? You feeling better? You want some food? I'm drinking. But Taku isn't quite ready for solids. Don't drown. Yeah. They always stuff their nose in too deep. You not hungry? So good with the eyes, like. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. <laughs> While Taku naps. Okay. Look we'll play outside. Kim takes the wolf pup on her first shelter tour. Stick puppy. Good girl. So I'm just trying to build up a bond, but she just wants to be left alone. <laughs> I always hate this stage when they don't feel comfortable around you and need to convince them that we're okay. You're not going anywhere without me. No, we might as well be friends. Ronnie? Ronnie is Angelica's dog, the German Shepherd. He's a good playmate. Yeah, you like Ronnie. Hey, who's that? I'm trying to kind of see how they're doing together because she introduced them with a dog that's comfortable around us. They think like, oh, you know, people are not so bad because they have a positive energy towards us. Dad, eh? Yeah, kind of helps them settle in and accept us. It helped big time with Odin, too. The shelter's skittish wolf dog, Odin. Ronnie wants to play. Gets daily romps with Ronnie. Eh? Friend. He started to realize that we're not going to hurt him. But the wolf pup is not so sure. I don't really know what to make out of Ronnie yet. It still takes time. It doesn't do miracles, but it, uh, it certainly helps. At Northern Lights Wildlife Shelter, volunteer Kim Grouse has been trying to settle a new wolf pup they've named Freya. I'm trying to build up a bond and that he learns that humans are not scary. They stay calm. And Show him that it's okay. But he's not really too convinced yet. <laughs> oh, big raven. So this is a good position because I'm kind of protecting him now. That's good because then the human becomes a safe haven. Now things can happen. You can hide with me. That's okay. Mm -hmm. I don't like taming a wild animal. It's, but what else, right? Now she's leaning on my hand. So that's kind of it's a good positive thing. It's like teeny tiny steps every day. over in the paddock. Hi, little dude. Count is also making progress. With the foal, it's a matter of keeping the wound clean now, which is why today he's wearing a t-shirt. <laughs> so I'm pretty happy with how this worked. We've managed to find a way to keep the bugs off it and keep the dirt off of it, so it's kept it pretty clean. Yeah, 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 I know. <laughs> See, I'm not all bad. 
I know where all the good spots are. <laughs> Can we please be friends, hmm? <sighs> I tried. <laughs> Next day in the nursery, all eyes are on the underweight cub Taku. His pen spread with his favorite treats. It's the first solid food Taku has had in two weeks. You can see that he's doing good. So he's not there yet, he's still really weak, he still sleeps a lot, but there's definitely yeah, progress going on. Still holding my breath a little bit, but I get a little bit more hope every day. <laughs> That's what we love to see. We want to see him protect himself. How dare you? you humans. The angrier they get at us, the better it makes us feel. It's quite the character. <laughs>